sledgehammer is looking tight. She's getting closer and closer. And I'm here tonight working on the cylinder heads. And tomorrow, or maybe the next day, I'm going to give you a run through on the heads and show you what we've done with that. But right now I'm doing prep work. I'm getting stuff ready to go. And I'm ready to start getting ready to lap in the valves and do all of that. And since I'm here and I'm working on something I think you guys are going to find interesting, let me show you this real quick. So think of me as the free horsepower fairy. If there's a way to find an extra freebie one, two, three horsepower anywhere in an engine, I'll find it. It's how I grew up. I wanted to go fast. I had no money. I, I had no resources. So I had to think and I read and I studied and I just, I, I was a sponge and I absorbed all the things I could find. And one of the things early on that I learned was about back facing valves and the difference between street valves and race valves. And this is something I've done on engines that I've, I've been putting together now for over 40 years, close to 45 years. I'm old. So we're working on the 3D3 here. And we already covered the, the whole the blueprinting part of it, that last video that we did. And let me show you what I'm doing here with these valves. So let me turn this thing around. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm back facing the valves. And what is back facing? All right. This is a stock valve, okay? And if you look right here, you'll see there's a ridge. It's like a trough that goes around the outside of the valve between the back face right here and the seat. Now this makes up, this ridge right here makes up about 25, 30% of the seat. And like I said, it goes all the way around. So basically, as the intake mixture is hitting this, hitting the back side of the valve, it's coming this way to go into the, into the chamber and it's hitting this ridge. Now, why is this ridge here? This is a really good question, which I've wondered about forever. I've researched, I've looked into it. I could never find a reason for this ridge. And what I also noticed that this ridge exists mostly on older engines, like let's say carbureted era engines. Modern engines don't have this ridge and race valves never have this ridge. Race valves just have the seat and then into the back face. I've speculated that the reason this ridge is here is because with a carbureted engine, when the engine is cold and you've got, you've got a, a very sloppily regulated mixture coming into, into the engine, the, valve, the back face of the valve is cold and so it's not able to help with the vaporization process yet. And as the mixture is coming through and hitting the back of the valve, some of it falls out of suspension and condenses on the back of the valve. And I believe that this trough is here to keep that condensation from just dripping into the into the combustion chamber and giving it a little bit of a chance to actually, you know, start to vaporize as the valve warms up. I believe that that's what it's there for. If anybody has a, a better explanation for it than that, or actually knows the factual reason why it's there, feel free to jump in because I guess I've, I've looked for that answer for my whole life and I never found it. All right, so back facing. So here is same valve. And this one has been back faced. And what I did here was I cut that ridge down. You can see that we basically blended the back face of the valve right here, more or less into that ridge. Now there's a tiny, tiny bit of the ridge left because I don't want to take it all the way down and narrow the seat too much. Narrow a seat is good for flow. Reducing this ridge right here is good for flow because anything that inhibits the, the, the mixture from, from hitting that back of the valve and just flowing smoothly into the combustion chamber is a problem. This helps tremendously at low lift. So you know, that's, that's that, you know, under 50 number that everybody's like, you know, okay, well, you know, duration at 50. Well, this is like right there where the 50 would start to count. Very, very low lift, just as a valve is being cracked off its seat. You're getting just that much more area that the mixture can go through and start flowing. It does make power. There are no negative side effects to this. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to, especially in a street engine, you don't want to narrow that seat to where it's just absolutely nothing. But if you just take this down so that it's barely noticeable, barely noticeable as you're coming across it, as opposed to this one that's very pronounced, that, that'll make you a difference for sure. Now, how do you go about doing that without any special tools? Well, Usually when I'm doing this type of stuff, I'm at the house and I've got a, a little drill press on the workbench over there and I'll chuck the valve up into the drill press and then I'll use a file, a simple file, just like that. And as the valve is spinning, I'll hold the file 
against the back facer right here and then lean it lean it down into that ridge and just let it spin until I see it start to get wide like that and then I'll check it periodically over here tonight I don't have a drill press with me I don't know why I don't have a drill press here I should have a drill press here so what I'm doing here tonight is I've just got this drill chucked up in a vise and I'm sticking the valve in here, spinning it, and holding a, the file against it. So I'm going to do that to all of the intake valves. The exhausts, I picked up a brand new set of exhausts for this engine. Um, I might I might narrow those just a hair. It's got a very wide seat. But you see, it doesn't have a ridge. And the ridge wouldn't really be very uh, detrimental on an exhaust valve because the flow is coming this way, not this way. But uh, I'll probably stick these on there and narrow them down just a hair, just a hair, just to clean them up a bit. So, free horsepower, right? It's all little things like that. You find one here, three there, five in another place. You know, just by just by smoothing, balancing, working, you know, just, just working the details. And before you know it, you've got some pretty serious gains. So, I'm going to continue on with this. And like I said, tomorrow or the next day, we'll do a whole thing on those heads. And I'll show you detailing the heads, not blueprinting the heads, but detailing the heads. And I'll go into explanation in that, on that video. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that. Look at this sexy beast thing. Look at this. Right? I mean, it's, it's like it's ready to lunge. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow.